Hi everybody, welcome back to Dragon's Pearl Tarot. Today we're going to be doing How Are You Leveling Up? For Pile 1, we have the Chariot and this Palo Santo for your psychic linking object. Uh, for Pile 2, we have the Seven of Cups with this Rose Quartz for your psychic linking, linking object. And we have the Two of Wands with this little brass bell. Go ahead and take a few minutes, pick your pile. Hi, pile one, welcome back to Dragon's Pearl Tarot. I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. Today we're gonna to be doing, how are you leveling up? You have chosen the chariot card. So chariot is all about being on your way, in all senses. It has to do with transportation. It has to do with making your way in life. It has to do with decisiveness, discernment, making important choices. Um, but it's also about Dharma because it's also about being on your way. So it's about knowing where you're going <clears throat> and, and kind of having that, that undaunted sense of, uh, of purpose that that says yes obstacles are a part of life um but but i'm not here for the obstacles i'm not here for the highs or the lows <clears throat> i'm here for my purpose and i know what my purpose is um and then on the top of this deck i just pulled the tower card and on the bottom i got the you got the magician So you may be having a, <clears throat> a tower moment. You often see the chariot and the tower together, um, not because their energies are similar, but because one often gives way to the other. The past position, we have the Ten of Cups. Wonderful, this is all about family and abundance and, and togetherness, whether this is your chosen family, um, or your biological family, whatever your family looks like. This is talking about being with people that you love and sharing and um, having, having enough, having enough of your physical needs met, but also having enough in, a, in an emotional sense. So you're coming from a very emotionally stable and mature place. Your somatic subconscious is strength. So you, so you have done some incredible work that your, your physical body is strong. And that doesn't necessarily mean um, that you're like into weightlifting, although that could be something that you're into. I don't know. Um, but, but it's more, you know, the spiritual strength, the spiritual strength of your body. Um, and if you are struggling with uh, with with chronic health issues or 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 your or whatever kind of health issues um, or maybe you've just been working really hard to stay healthy uh, you you've put a lot of energy into knowing what your body needs to be balanced and that is strength because if you're if you're balanced and if your body is is balanced and in a state of homeostasis then what can you do you can respond you can be decisive and you can make choices that align you with your purpose so this is this is beautiful um now you have the daughter of swords in the present position and the daughter of cups in the aid position so you have two daughters which is pretty interesting and we have the cups again so that kind of <clears throat> I keep getting this card in this position too, which is really interesting, but I think this speaks to where you're coming from. So, so you have the aid of your community. You have the aid of your emotional maturity that is, is coming from the strength that you've built with your community. And, um, and then this is you, the daughter of one. So, so in the past, uh, you know, not that you have to be like water or fire or anything. You, you definitely can be both. And wands actually has a lot of both because um, whenever you have alchemy, there's a kind of fire water thing going on. Think of like acids and volcanoes and, 
yeah, so <laughs> I digress, but daughter of wands. So you have some alchemical energy. You're moving a little bit more from, if I were to use the zodiacs, I might say that you are going from a little bit of a Piscean energy. You're taking with the support that emotional maturity that you've developed through your relationships that you've, that you've built with your community intentionally, you are transforming uh, into a little right now you're vibing more with the one suit and you know that could change right of course probably we're always changing especially with the minor arcana they represent the more transient phases of life and then in the subconscious mind we have the father of swords so you are mentally sharp so as far as your level up we're kind of getting to that part, right? This is all where you are now and where you're going, but it looks like your position to just, you know, whew. near future, we have the high priestess. There it is. So you're moving into this phase. So this is your next level up is it's going to be the way that your community <clears throat> and your emotional maturity supported your transformative mental and and strong relationship with your physical body that's all going to coalesce i don't see the star card but i feel the star energy of the coming together of the heaven and the earth um like the star seed and um developing into the high priestess so very very intuitive and you know in the in the major arcana arcana so like i said um the major arcana is not naturally going to contain all of the elements of the minor arcana um beautiful card let's see what else we have um in the advice position this is the three of coins so it says that 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 you have um that you need to focus on your financial foundation. So maybe, maybe you already have a really strong financial foundation and that isn't saying that, um, that that's going to change. If anything, it's saying that, that you should keep building on what you have to support your level up. So you need to be able to continue feeding your mind and feeding your body the way that you have been to transform into this high priestess energy like you're about to. This is about to happen. Um, and in environment, we have father of wands. Okay, so you have some influence in where you are right now as the daughter of wands. So this level up is you have a mentor. You have a mentor in this level up. And remember that you choose your mentors, okay? Um, and you, and you know, and, and you also might have, most people have different mentors in different phases and, and that's fine too. Uh, <clears throat> it's really important to know that, that it's something that you choose though, because like <clears throat> at work, you know, or in school, we're so used to, oh, this is your mentor and it's someone that, <laughs> that, you, that you get assigned to and it's like, um, make it work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you like them. It doesn't matter, uh, how they treat you a lot of the times, which, you know, it shouldn't matter if you like them in a professional environment because you, you should be able to work with people you don't like. Uh, it does matter. Um, if there's something more discriminatory going on with that. So anyways, um, my point is that Oh, oh, my, my point is that the, the way the word mentor is used in school and work environments is not true to the word mentor in a spiritual sense. So it's really important to understand when you're doing spiritual work that, you know, first of all, if you're in a work situation that, which, which, which has become just like very, very common. So I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this there's really like we really have had to actively fight against this idea almost that that discrimination should be allowed which is just the definition of injustice um 
you're in a work environment that it's like your mentor can treat you however they want and they can treat you really poorly, that's probably discrimination or harassment and you should really, I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing almost because it makes me angry and like, uh, and, and it's just, um, it's just wild. So that, so, so first of all, that's not okay, but sometimes we get the message that it is. I'm sure everyone here has had some situation (laughs) that some mentor was not respectful, maybe, maybe, maybe not something super serious even, but like, there's no room to talk about it because, um, everyone's so afraid of getting in trouble. And it's just like, I think that's part of why we have to have these conversations on YouTube, you know, because it's, it's become really hard to have open, clear communications. And and that's also affected the way that we look at the word and the concept of a mentor. But I want to remind you that a mentor is not only someone that treats you with basic respect, because that should be something that is something that you have a right to in any, any environment. Okay. Um, but that when you choose a mentor for, for something like this, you know, it's not like you just choose one mentor and you're married to that mentor, but, but it is, uh, I think, something sacred and part of that sacredness is about choice and you chose the chariot so you probably really value choice and free will so so when you choose a mentor um you know it's mutual it's a it's a type of friendship right so friendship is mutual and mentorship is a type of friendship not the kind you have at work at school, but the kind you have when you pick a teacher and you're like, I want to study with that person. I want to learn from that person. You chose them and they somehow made themselves available and in that way chose you. So you choose your mentors. And and if if a mentor who was the right mentor at one time isn't, the right mentor at another time you say hey you know our friendship has changed um you know it's a type of friendship in the fear and hope position this is hope we have the lovers so you're aiming high you really know you know who you are you know you've got this really strong community you've got your mentor with the father of ones so Either you have someone, and just because it's father of ones doesn't mean that your mentor is going to be a masculine. Um, <clears throat> it does mean that that it's the king energy of the wands. So it's someone who's really at the top. But they they could be male or female or non-binary identify anyway, um, and have any type of energy, but you either have chosen this mentor or you are about to choose this mentor. This mentor is someone in your environment who you may or may not have actually talked to yet. And it, and it's someone who you may or not, may or may not yet have had this conversation about mentorship with. And I'm going to tell you that you have to ask. So if you're, if you're like, Oh, I think, I think they're my mentor, but I'm not sure. I know this sound, this might sound a little out there, you know, if you're, if you're not used to thinking about things this way, but, but I'm telling you that you need to ask, you need to have a conversation with them where, where you sit down and you say, um, this is who I am and, and this is who I think you are. And I, I hope that that you would teach me or, or mentor me. Um, that conversation is really important. And I can tell you as a teacher that it, that it means more than you think to them, to your teacher. And it's okay if you've never had this conversation with your mentor. I'm not saying that relationship isn't valid or, or, or complete. Um, but you might want to have that conversation if you haven't. Okay. Um, 
just because this is all about community and communication and it's going to strengthen the communication between you so that um, sometimes a mentor will really want to help you, but until you tell them, until you ask for help, they might not know the best way to do that. In the final outcome, we have the six of, double checking this is one, no, this is a, sorry, I sometimes get confused with this deck if I'm looking at the wands or the swords. No, this is the wands. So the six of wands is the hero card. So, so this tower moment, you're that, 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 that it's either something you're going through or your community is going through, or it's kind of, we're kind of going through a one big tower moment, you know, which doesn't mean we're all going to be, well, most, I don't know if everyone's going to be okay. You know, not everyone's going to be okay, but as a collective, we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through this tower moment and you're going to come through with all of this wisdom and strength, my goodness, like what are, what are you working on? So there's going to be some challenges ahead, but you are ready for it. Okay. Um, you're, you have the seven of wands that, that has to do with that chariot card you chose and that sense of strong identity of knowing who you are. Um, you have the alchemy of the two of wands and the, the hero card of the six of wands. So in the final outcome, there will be some challenge. And that is that challenge is going to give you the opportunity to show the world what you've learned and what you have, uh, sorry, what you've learned and what you're made of. And that is my reading for your level up for 2023. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Pile 2. Welcome back to Dragon's Pearl Tarot. Thank you for joining me today for your reading on your next level up. Your level up for 2023. You have picked the Seven of Cups, the Too Many Choices card. So, so this is, um, so the next card is the Eight of Cups, where something has been let go. Because when you have too many choices, that is all about discernment, not, not unlike the chariot card in the first pile. And you might want to watch that if you haven't already. You might feel drawn to that pile. Um, so for the pile number two with the psychic linking object of the rose quartz, you have a lot of pathways for this level up. Maybe there are a lot of different pictures of yourself that you hold in your head of who you could be. And you either need to integrate them into a, a single vision of a, of a single person who is you in the future, who embodies all of those things in an integrated way. Or if you find those things cannot exist in me, I can't be this person and that person. I just can't, I know it in my heart. Then you need to choose. So it's either going to be an alchemical integration or it's going to be a tough choice. And either way, there's going to be some loss and the walking away of the Eight of Cups. But then what's after the Eight of Cups is the Nine of Cups, which is the wish fulfillment card, right? So whatever your next level up is, it's really important that you, you know, I think you're doing the right thing, just tuning into your intuition um, and asking yourself, what choices do I need to make for my next level up? Okay, let's pull your cards. Okay. On the top of the deck, we have Daughter of Swords. Beautiful. So the swords are all about mental capacity, and the mental capacity centers around discernment, especially in, in Eastern medicine, but also in, in Western medicine too, because the prefrontal cortex has everything to do with, with choices and um, inhibition of impulses too, so self-control. 
Um, so it's all about discernment, really. Anyways, the daughter of swords is um, is really telling me that that you have the mental sharpness and tools that you need to make the tough choices that you're being asked to make. But, uh, you know, as the daughter of swords, it's um, a little bit uh, adolescent in that phase, which is just to say that there's still a lot to learn. Looks like I forgot this placement. So um, through your next level up, I suspect that you're going to transform from the daughter of swords. It's going to be enough to help you make this tough choice and your discernment will grow and strengthen through that so that this daughter of swords is, is going to grow up whether we see her later embodied as the the queen or king of swords or or not um and the seven of coins at the bottom seven of coins is kind of like collecting a harvest so you did a lot of work already to get where you are is what i'm getting from those cards <clears throat> but you're but you still have some maturing to do let's let's learn more about that okay in your past position, we have the Ace of Wands. Beautiful. In the below subconscious, we have the Ten of Wands. Um, this, is a, this is a warning in this position, in the somatic position. This tells me that, that you need to make some choices to better guard your health because this is the somatic subconscious. So the, the way that your body communicates with your brain and and with every everything else right so <clears throat> ten of wands is like carrying a really heavy load where you deserve some recognition for the work that you did if it were a work situation it would be like you put in so much work that the 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 energy is not being reciprocated and until it is you need to put you need to put something down you're carrying too heavy a load so if this is in the body position it is a little bit of a health warning to me, not anything crazy or scary, but it's definitely saying, you know, are you drinking enough water? Are you eating all your colors? Maybe you need uh, some powdered fruits and vegetables to make that possible. I know I do, um, you know, but it's stuff like that because, you know, or do you just need to rest? Because the, your body is carrying too much and you need to make some choices that are going to help you that are aligned with your physical health and that's going to support everything else right that's why this is in the below position in the above mental position we have the hierophant wow so you're a teacher you're a seasoned teacher you already have um you've been through a lot of the initiations because you already have the mental state of the hierophant Okay, so in the present position, we have the Father of Swords. There you go. <laughs> so this kind of makes sense to me that we would see the Father of Swords in the present position after seeing the Hierophant because I was thinking having the Hierophant doesn't really line up with what I was saying about the adolescence of the Daughter of Swords. The Hierophant, like I said earlier, so maybe we'll see the, the, the King or Queen of Swords. The Hierophant lines very much more with the king and queen um and specifically i would say with the sword suit so you have been through some ace of wands transformation maybe you recently okay <clears throat> i don't know how many people will will be watching this for some of you you have recently made a choice that was ab absolutely transformative and maybe that shook up some stuff and you need to take some time to release it and rest. Um, but in that process, you have developed the mental sharpness of the hierophant and, <clears throat> and you have the strength and sharpness, the physical strength and sharpness of the father of swords, but you've done a lot of work to get here. You need, you need to take a break, okay? And then in the aid position, we have the emperor, wow. So you have someone very powerful helping you in this level up, which doesn't mean that they did the work for you, but um, it may be that you made some choices around asking for help from the right people. I talked a lot about mentorship in the last video, and you might be interested in that. 
for the it doesn't have to be a mentor though um you know we have we have the king and the emperor though so 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 it does say to me that that there's some kind of age difference or something like that but not necessarily in the near future of your level up we have the five of cups so in the near future you know it's a good thing that you have all this wisdom because there's going to be something you need to let go of and <clears throat> my my advice to you is to really take some time to think about what it is that you need to do to support your physical health and to get the rest and nutrition and nourishment that you need so that you get to choose what you let go of. Because you know that saying that's like, if you don't take time to rest, then, then your body will make time for you. I'm not saying you're going to get sick, but there's something all of us, if we don't take care of ourselves, of course will, you know, but what I'm seeing here is something like you need to make a choice that that's, that's going to have to do with how you rest and take care of your body. That's going to influence whether or not this five of cups is something that you choose or something that the universe chooses for you. Is this five of cups going to be something you choose or something that the universe chooses for you? I suspect I'm repeating this because I think it's important. I suspect that it has to do with this two of wands, but you have this 10 of wands. You have so many resources. You have the daughter of swords, the king of swords, the emperor, the ace of swords, the hierophant. I mean, you might have a little anxiety with all of these choices and all of these gifts. Okay. But, um, you know, remember that you were given these gifts so that you can meet these challenges. I believe that, um, in the advice position, we have 10 of coins, 10 of coins has to do with intergenerational wealth and inheritance. Uh, it doesn't have to be monetary. What I am getting from this has to do with saying that your advice is to, you know, and bear with me. I don't know if you're going to see it, but what I'm seeing is that the advice is to ask your ancestors for help making this choice, because I think that the coins represent the wisdom of your ancestors and is a reflection of all of these gifts that you have. You have some challenges and you have some gifts like all of us. Ask your ancestors to help you understand that for your next level up. So 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 the whether or not you make a choice, how you choose what it is you let go of next is is going to affect what you manifest next and what your next level up is going to look like and that's always true but you chose the seven of cups and then we pulled the five of cups so i'm really getting this energy of discernment about letting go and really the i never thought about it before but now i really see this let me know in the comments if you see this too the the five of cups being a spiral down from the seven of cups kind of embodies what i was talking about because the seven of cups is about choice and the five of cups is about loss. So you're bringing this hierophant and sword energy in to make some discerning choices about what to let go of and put down. Ask your ancestors, what do I need to let go of to level up? What do I need to let go of to be the version of me that I see in my head that I know is so close and that I know is meant for me and that I know I'll be of service to myself and the world if I jump that timeline. In the environment position, we have, oh my, Ten of Swords. Oh, sorry, Nine of Swords. Um, so this is a scary card, right? No lie. But the Nine of Swords is better than the Ten of Swords because the Ten of Swords is about real betrayal. And this is not the Ten of Swords. This is about nightmares. What this is saying is that in your environment, a lot of people are afraid. 
and it might not be you and it might be you even it's it's very hard if you're a sensitive person you'll pick up on if everyone is afraid you'll feel it and and you know practice that discernment to recognize you know maybe what you need to let go of is other people's energies um and thoughts if you experience it that way so oh we have the nine of swords and the ten of wands i kind of get the sense with the hierophant and the father of swords that you are sitting back in some great wisdom watching some great chaos thinking how am i going to get through this and stay true to who i am you're going to be able to do it you need to let go of some things and and you know that or you wouldn't have chosen seven of cups because like i said at the beginning any choice involves some loss any act of discernment discernment has to do with the swords because it's about cutting any choice you cut you separate in your hopes and fears position we have the death so you are you want transformation and you are afraid of it and and that fear is probably why you're holding on to some things we are all always holding on to some things. Attachment and discernment is all about constantly tuning into your higher self and asking, what do I let go of and what do I keep? But, but there's some real fear around that. And there's also some real hope because I think that you know that you have some really good things coming in the final outcome and that you need some transformative energy. You need real strong transfer, transformative energy. You need something that, that only the death card has to transform this nightmare it's like it's like people are living in a nightmare but a lot of it is um heaviness created by caring too much to so ask your ancestors to help you develop your discernment and keep in mind that your ancestors one one of your ancestors or more your ancestors can be you from a different timeline okay um so so you can very much think of it as your higher self and or your ancestors and and ask for help ask for help feeling confident like i feel in your solar plexus and navel chakras that that i i think you should do some some strengthening core exercises i don't know why i'm getting that i'm, I'm seeing the sun and the emperor card yeah and that might have to do with this and that's good general advice for anyone but i'm just really feeling it um the navel chakra is all about discernment um and and that and that will help um and it also helps your body better be able to eliminate what it needs to eliminate with the apana, right? So that ten of wands, I, I just keep coming back to it, but um, I'm feeling there's something important there. Okay, so navel chakra work, which includes abdominal exercises, um, meditations on the navel chakra, wearing wearing yellow. Um, mostly mostly tuning into your your higher self and your ancestors okay always and then um in the final outcome oh oh man i was i was hoping that we would have have but man i couldn't have anticipated such a beautiful spread for your final outcome we have the hermit the son and the father of wands And the hermit might not be, the, the hermit can go with the hierophant. It's not necessarily that you are, is, it, you're not isolated. The, the hermit, when it's healthy, when it's not healthy, the hermit can be isolation. But when the hermit is healthy, it's connected with its community and it's out in the world. But it carries this, you know, just like the turtle, it carries this shell around with it. 
so that um, it can observe the world and engage with it from that place. And then you have the sun transformation, navel chakra energy, but through the whole body. Think about that that navel chakra energy, but going through the whole body and especially the brain and, and especially the stomach and the brain. And then the father of wands, mother of wands. This is the Kundalini symbol, the two and a half coils, major transformation in your next level up. I'm really excited. Let me know what you're up to and where you're headed because it looks it looks really exciting. Thank you for joining me, Pile 2, and I will see you next time. This is Dragon's Pearl Tarot. Hi, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. This is Dragon's Pearl Tarot. You have chosen the Two of Wands. Your psychic linking object is this little brass, per, little brass uh, bell. Ooh, sorry, I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Let's get a little tongue-tied. What is your level up? What is your next level up? Pile three, two of wands. I'm already seeing a lot of fire and a lot of water and, and a lot of alchemy and phoenix energy. What's your next level up? Pile three with the brass bell. This brass bell I've had I've had forever. Honestly, um, I got them when I was like 12. I think I wanted to use them for a, a sewing project with a friend. And um, I was so lucky that my parents supported me in, in those kinds of creative things. And uh, yeah, I've had them forever. I never, <laughs> never use them for sewing. I'm going to, I'm going to do something cool with them eventually, but maybe this is you know, for this bell, this is that cool thing right now. I don't know why, but I want to flip over this final outcome position now. I got the Eight of Swords. So you can't see out of the cocoon. You're blindfolded. But you're about to bust out of that cocoon. On the top of the deck, I have the Mother of Cups. And on the bottom, I have the Three of Cups. So Mother of Cups is um, so much emotional maturity. And let's see what we have in your past position. We have the Two of Coins. So you have, in the recent past, you have established some kind of strong foundation for yourself in the physical world. In the somatic subconscious, we have the daughter of wands. So you have done some powerful alchemical work, transforming some something in your body, some energy that, that was time to let go of. Um, and you're still processing it, but it's like on its way. It's on its way out, okay. In the current position, <clears throat> We have the Seven of Swords, the Fox card, which reminds us that, that the Seven of Swords um, it is about sneakiness, the way we think that a, that a fox might be sneaky, but that is more so about cleverness, the way that a fox is about cleverness, and um, that it depends whose point of view that you're looking at, right? Because if you look at it from the point of the view of the fox, it's just trying to survive and it has every right to do that. So you are in a moment now that you might need to be a little secretive and remind yourself that, you know, ask your higher self, but, but it's not, um, you know, your business is your business. Okay. And, um, you don't need to tell, you know, if you're looking for a new job, because of toxicity in your work environment, you don't need to tell anyone that you're looking. You know, if you, um, if you need to, if you need to write, write. I I always associate the Seven of Cups with documentation because, um, because if you're in a situation that you're being mistreated, it's really important to write down what's going on as honestly as you can. And in it as timely as a way as you can from your perspective. And 
Um, but it can be, it can be so many things. It can be, um, oh, you know, like, uh, something with a contract. It's not saying a lie. It's not saying a lie. But if somebody is trying to, um, suppose somebody gives you something and says, just sign it. And you say, I want to look over it. And they're, and they're like, oh, you know, that's really silly. Why don't you trust me? And you're like, I would just, um, you know, really feel more comfortable if I, if I took it home and I looked it over and then you take it home and then you go see another lawyer. Did you do anything wrong? No, you have a right to do that. Should you have told them? Probably not. Right. So, um, yeah, withholding, you know, information can be a type of deceit, but, but this is those kinds of situations where it's really not as clear. So you have to ask yourself, am I, am I, am I sneaking in a way that is taking, which isn't the sense that I get. I get the sense that you're, um, sometimes the seven of swords is depicted. There's one, I think it's this card that's depicted as like, someone has stolen this hen's egg. These foxes have stolen these hen's egg and they're, and so the fox is a different energy in this, in this analogy than mine, but the, the foxes have stolen a hen's egg and they're, they're cooking it over an open fire and the hen is begging them to have it back. Um, so the seven of swords, you know, she's coming at them with reason and she's appealing with the mother of cups energy, but it's not working because that's not how these people who stole, sorry, I bumped the microphone. Um, that's not how the people who stole from her are seeing it, even though it's her child that, that they stole. And so in, in that situation, the seven of swords, it's a uh, white feather tarot who I watched, I think who was talking about this and has this deck and tells the story a lot, but it, it's like the seven of swords could mean that you could be the hen and you need to find a sneaky way to steal your egg, your baby back from where it was stolen. And you might need to be sneaky. You might need to distract someone, you know? So anyways, that is the seven of swords. Um, so like I said, it depends. Do you see, um, it depends if you're looking from the perspective of the fox or not. Uh, I like the I like the hen in that story. Personally, I love foxes, and I wish it wasn't a fox who had stolen the egg. But see so yeah, how this little fox is just you know they're um, they're related to dogs. <laughs> um, they're sweet and timid and smart. And look at this fox just just peeking out, keeping an eye out. He's a survivor, all right? This fox is a survivor. He's going to protect his pack. He's going to make it through. That's where you are right now. And then in the, um, <clears throat> so this would be the obstacle position. This is the kind of obstacle that would necessitate a kind of seven of swords energy, right? If you're in a situation that there's been some injustice, you might need to take some action um, that takes some courage. Okay. In the above position, we have the emperor. Beautiful. So you're mentally coming from this very strong place. Your, your mind and your body are very much in tune. You have a lot of solar energy, um, and you have the transformative ability to tune into your intuition, which for me is the daughter of wands here and, um, really use your intellectual capacities to navigate this tricky situation. And then you are going to be in the hermit soon. So in this case, what this is telling to me is that for your next level up, you need to take some time you need to take some time to go within. And again, this could be actually staying at home and working from home for a little while, or, or it could be that you're still out and about on an everyday basis and you're, you're going wherever you go to do your work or, or your school or, or your, or your activities and crafts and hobbies. And, uh, but you're doing it 
from a little bit of, of a withdrawn place. And so some people might feel that you're being a little cold, but you're just, you're just, uh, it's like you're learning how to set new boundaries. And so for a while they might be, the, the gates might be up a little high until you feel comfortable maybe lowering them. And then you might be like, Oh, that's too low, you know? So, um, it's so, so don't worry about how other people react as long as you're doing your best to be kind and considerate and polite. You know, you have a right to set those boundaries. And so that's going to be critical for your level up. You absolutely need to armor up. You absolutely need to get out of this sticky situation. And then you need to take some time to reflect and, and to kind of rebuild. I have a feeling that this is like a big shakeup, okay? <clears throat> and you probably picked the two of wands because you knew you were going to need a lot of that Phoenix energy to get through whatever this is that you're going through right now. This card that I'm using right now to point <laughs> is the advice card, Father of Swords. This is telling me to lean into this strong energy, the, the strong emperor energy that you have um, in your mental subconscious. And this is the community father of pentacles. So you have, you have support and, and that doesn't, that doesn't mean, you know, someone's paying all your bills or, you know, or maybe, maybe they are, maybe you have a uh, family or friends that, that help out, whatever it is, but it could also be not financial. This, this father of pentacles could be your partner or a friend that you just really can call when you're having a hard time. Okay, but you have support. You have someone that believes in you and and they really want to see you on the other side of this tricky situation. In the hopes and fears position, we have the five of coins. So there's a real fear of not having enough. Remember that the five of coins that um, the flower. So so in this card, the flower is alive still. It's dying, but it's alive. So when something is, you know, wilting, it's like you don't know if it could be regenerated with a cup of water or not. It's kind of like Schrodinger's cat, right? Until you try to resuscitate this rose, it's dead and alive because you don't know which way it's going to go. You have to try. You have to try. Okay, so in the traditional Rider Waite deck in the Five of Coins, there are two figures. It looks like a mother and child or maybe maybe an older child and a younger child huddled in the cold outside of a church. It's an absolutely heartbreaking image. And um, on so so the next card is the six of coins which is the charity card and i and and i think one of the interpretations the idea is that they're so close to help that if they went and knocked on the church door that they would be able to get the help that they needed i feel like it's a little more complicated for me when i look at that card i think um you know and i come from a background that um that has been oppressed you know by by christians a really long time. Um, I'm sorry if that offends you, but it's the truth. And, you, you know, we've had children kidnapped to be baptized thousands of years of history of this. And, and so, when, and, and that if you're not baptized, the church won't help you. And so when I see that card, I see someone who went up and asked for help from the church and they said, you're not the right kind of person. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough to help you specifically and and they got turned away and 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 so there's kind of it can be either it can be both you know but it's really about asking for help because if you ask for help and you got turned away or you haven't asked for help you still need to ask someone new for help okay so the key to the five of coins and this I'm sure of is asking for help so however you relate to this card you need to get this rose some water and some fertilizer. You, you know, you need, the rose can't ask for help. So you just need to help it. So what's the rose in your life? Is it you? If it's you, you need to ask for help. And if you've asked for help and you've been rejected, 
that might have to do with this tower going on. You need to ask for help from someone else. And it might be really scary, but it's really important that you don't close off because that's what I see when I see that Rider Waite card. I see like that they're so afraid to ask someone else for help because they've been rejected and that's why they're sitting in the cold outside. And that if they're too afraid to ask for help, there's no way they're going to be okay. But if they ask everyone they can, well, there's really a chance that some good soul is going to walk by and say, you know, everyone deserves charity. Um, and that's, mo that's how you move from that five of coins to the six of coins. So there's a real fear for you of, of being in this place of need. And it might, that, that those allegories might help you to think about it in a different way. If not, just, uh, you know, take what you need, leave the rest. And the final outcome, we have the Eight of Swords, we have the, the Three of Wands, and the Two of Wands. So you got double Two of Wands. Um, I put this Two of, I, so for all of the cards from this deck that I used for your Psychic Linking Objects, I put the same card from another deck in this one, but uh, there's three of them, and this one I picked the same one. I'm going to put it up here. So you are, and then, wow. A lot of wand energy, so much wand energy. Um, but I see a lot of balance with the elements because you have so many major ar arcana with the hermit and the emperor and the tower. But, but, you know, tower moments happen. They really do. And they can be big and small. They're always hard. Um, but that's why we read tarot is because it's very honest with us about the ups and downs of life. So, so you're going to be in the outcome, you're going to be in this chrysalis. So I see a lot of this energy, you know, you're going to go into the hermit, then you're, then you're going this fire is going to build and then you're just going to transform. And then at this moment, the final outcome, so this could be in a few weeks or a few months. This is like in a few days or hours, uh, in a few weeks or months, um, you're going to move from the two of wands to the three of wands. And then I think you're just going to burst out of your chrysalis, chrysalis into a beautiful butterfly. Thank you for joining me today. This is Dragon's Pearl tarot um please like comment and subscribe and i hope i'll see you next time have a great day